Hey, it's Chris from the Chris Stefanik Show. We dive into how to live a more joyful life every day, the kind of life that God created you for. Check it out. It's, it's hard to communicate that, though. I, mean, I can share with these stats. How do you, how do you um, give, give a couple nuggets to parents who are like, I don't, I, yeah. I'm going to lose what he just said. Well, you can replay this to your kids, by the way. You, you should do that. But yeah. what are a couple simple pointers? You want to, this is what's hard is, is that when you're living in a numbed way, you're not living a self-reflective life. Mm -hmm. But the best question, and I think a very piercing question is, is why do you do it? And listening to the answer. Mm. Because you can locate why? any why of the. Why do you do that? Why would you want to do that? Why yeah. are you asking me this question, teenager? What is yeah. the good that you're looking for? Mm. What's the actual good? Now, what's hard is, is that if you're not living a self-reflective life, it's a penetrating question that you can't answer. Oftentimes, the very first thing people will say is pain relief. Mm. So, to have a conversation with anybody, if you're saying, okay, you can look at the intention. This is great, the part about St. Thomas. He says yeah. you can look at the intention, and now you have a bunch of different ways yeah. to actually discover what you're looking for. Well, I'm looking... so. I, whatever the, that answer is, pain relief, that's a great one. Okay, well, what's the pain yeah. you're trying to relieve? Now, all of a sudden, you're having a real conversation. Yeah, right. I love that. I love that. Is it in your body? Is it in your soul? Is it in your mind? Is it in relationships? Is it in your money? Is it in, in social status? It is, okay, now, all of a sudden, you can talk to somebody, and, and, and the weed may solve it, and then you can say, well, how, is the, it's, how does this help? Mm. What is this helping? Reflect on this. Look into your life. And, and this is no, hard to work on that. Right, yeah. right. Now we have a million ways that we can actually tackle yeah. that. Yeah. I, we got a great question. Is, is pot in moderation okay like alcohol? And I knew that one was going to come in. Uh, and, and in fact, when they were fighting to legalize it in Colorado, it was all around, uh, well, we have alcohol, so therefore, and it, it was a straw man too. Because no, no one was, was saying, which one should we have? It was, this one's legal, and that's not changing. Should we add a drug? To the scene. <laughs> what will the societal impact be of adding that drug to the scene? What will it do to the common good? Yeah. Those are the questions. Right. Um, but there, there is a profound difference between what alcohol does to you and what pot does to you, even in moderation. Uh, and that's the first, this is the, this is, you cannot fall into this trap to have the conversation. Okay. Hey, well then why do you get to have a glass of wine and I can't right. have just a puff on a joint? Right. And I'm like, What's the why can't I take Oxycontin and you take Tylenol. Why can't I, or, or why can't I shoot heroin and you can drink coffee? Yeah. Let's actually, let, no, let's actually deal with things in and of themselves. Okay, well, what is the effect of CBD and THC and CBN and all of the, the, the cannabinoids that are existing within this? And let's look at their effects. We can look at things in themselves. If we're actually having a serious discussion, then what is the real effect of an actual drug on a person, not a metaphorical behavior? Mm. This, and, and so we, as soon as somebody not says... subjective experience of... Right. Dude, it doesn't really do anything to me. Okay, well, right. Actually, it does. Yeah, I just use it to go to sleep. That's another huge yeah. one. So, <clears throat> yeah. so if we're going to have a conversation, then let's actually look at things actually. Let's, let's, yeah. let's be people who can... Talk about, okay, well, what is the uh, THC? What's its real effect on the person? What does this do? And let's talk about that. The, the word psychotropic helps me describe yes. this to people. Yes. You know, we, uh, al alcohol is a depressant. Right. So it can relax you in, in the right quantity. Right. Lubricate a conversation. Make your, literally can be healthy. Can make your steak taste better. And a, a psychotropic removes you from reality, which is what alcohol does at the end of the road, which is at the, when you cross that line, it becomes gravely sinful. Yes. And it, pot, by its nature, does that immediately, in the, in, in the subtle in, ways. Right, in the intention of the person. Right, yeah. You, you don't smoke a joint not to get high. Yeah, that's right. One puff, you say, I say light high. Okay, let's get light high. That's still an intention for intoxication. Mm. So you, so... Um, Let's it, lightly alter my entire experience of reality, just a little bit. Right. Not I, just relax me. Right. I'm not going to be in touch with the thing. So that's, it's like, yeah. okay, which this is, the, this is the hard part is I actually think that the effects of marijuana in the person are very similar to the effects of masturbation. Wow. In the sense that what masturbation promises, it says mm -hmm. you're going to have communion, you're going to be fine, you're going to feel okay. But what it does is it draws you into your own secret world. Huh. 
And that's the same thing that, that happens with marijuana. That you can say, I'm, I'm now in communion with another person, but it draws you into your own secret world because there's no way. Yeah. A bunch of high people trying to talk to each other is a very embarrassing expression. <laughs> Dude, man, that was <laughs> yeah. fresh, man. Yeah. You're like, you're like we, yeah. we, we have cultural humor to drop you on it because it's like, what? Because right. it's the, and the humor is rooted in real experience, you know. And and you, I mean, again, as far as the the uh, the depressant, this helps me relax and focus on my steak. Frankly, it opens me up to reality a little more if I had just a little bit. The psychotropic makes that burger taste like the best piece of meat you've ever had, even though it's a dollar burger from McDonald's. This is that's not reality. That's not real, and it's right. literally mockable. Yeah. Well, and this is where. Okay, it it might be the wor it might be the best piece of meat you ever eaten, but you might actually see the entire process of meat production in your mind and heart, and say, "What am I? Am I in communion with the cow?" And then I've yeah. become the cow, and like now all of a sudden it's like, uh, but you this have, to have quite a lot of weed to start becoming the cow, but, right? Exactly, <laughs> but it's the end of the road. Which is where yeah. I actually think that the this is a really important part. I think that contemplation is the very best intention that you can apply mm. towards the uh, ingestion of marijuana. Mm. Contemplation. I want to know what is real. I want to become one with everything. I want to have communion. I want to have total transcendence and I want to have total imminence. I want to be in the flow of all of reality and experience that. Yeah. And and that's where it's such a, it's such a, which is, I actually think is the highest intention of the soul. Mm. Our intention is for divine mm. communion. That's why it's so evil, frankly. Man, wasn't that great? Listen, if you don't want to be happy, be sure not to subscribe. But if you want a more joyful life, the kind of life that God created you for, the kind of life Jesus promised when he said, I came to give you life to the full, then make sure you hit subscribe and share this channel with everybody you know.